Bill Jr. with his little sister, Calamity. Buffalo Bill Jr. brings you exciting action. Thrills and fun Whoa. with Judge Ben Fair and Square, Wiley. Buffalo Bill. is one we'll always remember in Wileyville. Of course, the town itself was built around the spring, so everything there kept pretty green. The townspeople weren't even uncomfortable. But it was mighty hard on the neighboring ranchers. Fighting earth is hard enough. But when Providence holds back the rains and the streams dry up, well, tempers are just bound to get as short as the withered crops themselves. I can't do anything for you, Peterson. But Mr. Williams helps us always when we need help. Mr. Williams won't be back for a week. Until then, I'm in charge, and there'll be no loans to farmers. Hello, Bill. Mr. Quigley, how do you Here's the Peterson? judge's package signed here for Mr. Quigley, Quigley, you don't understand. I've got to plant a new crop. My old crop is ruined. My wife and children, they'll starve unless I get it. This is an express office, Peterson. We do a little banking as an accommodation, but it's not a charity institution. I'll get out. But Mr. Quigley, I'm not asking for charity. All I want is help. Don't you understand? I said get out! Oh, hey, Mr. Peterson, come on now, stop it. Come on, Mr. Peterson, you're going to get in trouble. Stop it, please. Now, Mr. Peterson, just take it. Relax, oh. Mr. Peterson, now. Put the gun away, Mr. Quigley. I'll, I'll take care of him. Come on, Mr. Peterson. Let's go. No matter how you slice it, Peterson, it still comes out criminal assault. Now, the court has considered your provocations in this matter and finds them to be downright considerable, uh, what with the drought and your family to feed. Notwithstanding, etc., the court's got no choice but to find you guilty as charged and sentence you to 30 days. Now, wait a minute. The court isn't finished yet. Bill, bring over that box there. Now, the court recognizes the extenuating circumstances and has decided to suspend sentence on one condition. And that condition is that you take that box of groceries home to your wife. Now, what do you say? <laughs> well, court's adjourned. Get on home to your wife or she'll get worried. Hurry up. Countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bring you a miracle, a miracle of modern science. Rain, rain, rain. Deliciously wet, delightfully wet rain that your neighboring ranchers need so badly. It's a rainmaker, Bill. He's going to make it rain. I can feel it. He's a rainmaker. Uh-huh. And you're the president and I'm the Queen of Sheba. And now, my good friends and lucky citizens of Wileyville, permit me to introduce myself. Osgood Falstaff, rainmaker extraordinaire at your service, my lords and ladies. And beside me, that paragon of homely virtues and face to match, my assistant, Bardolph Higgins. 
And now, my good friends, to the matter at hand. In an attempt to alleviate the serious doubt, my assistant and I will give a public demonstration of the magical and mystical science of rainmaking right here on the main street tomorrow at mid-morning. Come one, come all, and come ye not empty-handed. My friends, I thank you. <laughs> Look at the big wheel, Bill. Judge Wiley, I presume? Yes, sir, that's right. Well, I should like to put your supplies at your emporium, sir. And uh, <coughs> also keep my equipment behind your place until tomorrow's demonstration. Uh, shall we discuss terms? <laughs> yeah. Come on inside, Mr. Falstaff. <laughs> I told you once, I told you a dozen times to keep away from this wagon. I didn't touch anything on it. Now go on, beat it. This is my backyard and I'll stay here if I want to. All right. Keep your dirty hands off my sister. Thou malcontent, go rogue, return to your labors. My deepest, profuse, and most profound apologies to you both. Your abject, humble servant is indeed disconsolate. But how can I atone? Ah, a thought. Both of you shall sit on yon wagon seat for the demonstration tomorrow. A private box for the show of the ages. Well, what say you? Gee, can we? You can if you like. We better be getting in the house. As the seventh son of a seventh son, in the name of Iris, Sirius, and Juno, hear my supplication. And what see you now? Clouds, white clouds. Ah, but rain comes from dark clouds, black clouds. Forsooth. We'll change the clouds. Are you ready for all figures? I am ready. Start the demonstration. <laughs> Spirit of the weather, I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements may as well lose the loud winds I'll demolish one plume that is in my crown. My fellow ministers are alike invulnerable. Let there be rain. <laughs> What happened? Uh, a masked man came in the side door, held me up, forced me to open the safe. Stole $20,000. I tried to stop him, but he, he shot and 
grazed my head. This, uh, this pipe fell out of his pocket when we were fighting. J.P. Jan Peterson. Huh? Well, after what happened yesterday, this looks bad. Bill, you better bring him in. No, Judge, Jan Peterson couldn't do a thing like that. Well, we'll leave that up to a court of law. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Do me a favor, sis. I want you to keep an eye on those rainmakers. But stay out of trouble and don't let them out of your sight. Do you think they had anything to do with the robbery? I don't think Peterson did. That's silly. They wouldn't rob the express of it and then sit out in front in plain sight. Besides, Mr. Quigley identified Peterson. I heard him. What about the pipe? Look, Clammy, I don't have time to argue with you. Will you do as I ask you and watch him? That's silly. But all right. Good. I'll explain it to you when I get back. Come on. Be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Yeah, that ought to do it. Now, you just take it easy for a couple of days and you'll be fine. Thank you, Judge. No, 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 no. Just uh, take a rest. It'll do you good. Well, not too much luck making rain, but you did manage to stir up a storm of trouble. Ah, so may the outward shows be lost themselves, but the world is still deceived with ornament. <laughs> yeah, whatever that's supposed to mean. Man, your groceries come to four dollars. You were the masked man. The man is crazy. Well, what about the pipe? It is yours. That's right. That pipe belongs to me, but I lost it yesterday when we had the fight. Don't you remember? I miss it when I get home. Then you weren't in town today? I could use the money, but no, I wasn't in town. You do believe me, don't you, Bill? Well, it doesn't matter much what I believe. Mount up. We'll go to town and do some checking. But, Bill, uh, you do believe me, don't you? Yes, Mr. Peterson. I believe you. Come on. Bill, Calamity's gone. I've searched everywhere for her. Looked high and low, and no sign of her. Where's the Rainmaker? The Rainmaker? Why, they... What's that got to do with Calamity? They left town hours ago. Wherever the Rainmaker is, that's where we'll find Calamity. I told you, they left town hours ago. Quigley. Bill. Quigley engineered that holdup. Quigley and Falstaff know each other, and I saw Higgins go in the express office just before the shots were fired. What are you talking about? If anyone knows where the Rainmaker is, Quigley will, and I mean to find out now. Wait a minute. What's Quigley got to do with Calamity and the Rainmaker, and what about Peterson? Just take good care, Mr. Peterson. I'll be right back with the real thieves and Calamity.
Blind, stupid fools taking this girl along. When she's missed, they'll be searching the whole countryside with a fine-tooth comb. We didn't take her. She was inside the machine when we got here. Aye, the lucky speaks truth verily. Yarn lass was an uninvited guest. Unsought, unsuspected, and most decidedly unwelcome. But she's here. Well, what about the money? You got that all right. Oh, the money, my friend, the money. <laughs> Money! Ducats, ducats, beautiful ducats. Quigley, an evil-tempered lout you may be, but with the imagination of a poet. Mm, magnifique. What are you talking about? Why, the modus operandi. Our little production of crime. The rain machine with its billows of smoke to hide everything. And good Bardor Higgins, who takes the money from you and hides the filthy lucre in the machine. A few shots, a bump on the head. Ah, but the crowning touch, the piece de resistance, to put the blame on Peters and the country bumpkin, that, my boy, was a stroke of genius. <laughs> while you blabber away, they probably figured out that Peterson didn't do it at all. Most likely, they're searching for us right now. Hurry up with that food. We'll grab a bite, divide the money, and then we'll be off. What about the girl? Well, she's as good as an insurance policy. No rough stuff with her. We'll take her along and head for the border. When we know we're safe, we'll dump her. As long as we got her, even if they catch up with us, they won't dare shoot at us. Hurry up with that food! Patience, merchants. Your courage uses through your pores. Uh, go out and see what's bothering the horses. Well, pluck up your spirits, man. Eat. What's the matter, kid? Don't you like your food? I'm not hungry. Well, you've got to eat. Eat something. Go ahead and eat. What's making you spooky? Me, Mr. Higgins. Not a sound. Keep your hands up. High. Over toward the wagon. All right, get up in that compartment. Not a sound or it'll be your last. Go on, move. Pronto. Taking him so long. There it goes again. Now wait, wait, I'll go and see myself. My cowards die many times before they diss. The valiant man never tastes of death but once. Julius Caesar, Act Two, Scene Two. You stay where you are, sit down. Higgins? Higgins? Well, curse that lazy wreck! Higgins! <laughs> now, no more tricks. Get up in that compartment. Why, well, I can't make it. My stomach won't fit. How'd you like to try a coffin on for size? <clears throat> Mere prose, but uh, effective.
sorry we had to bring you in, Jan, but that's the way things go. I understand, Judge. Will you give my regards to Ms. Peterson and the kids? Yes, I'll do that. And give my thanks to Bill for all he did for me, will you, Judge? Oh, of course I will. I'll tell him. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Now, young lady, you mind what you're doing. This compounded rain-making thing has got to be sent over to the county seat to use as evidence against those scoundrels. So don't let anybody tamper with it. Yes, sir. All right. Judge? Yeah? You think this rain-making machine will really make rain? Oh, fooey. <laughs> Buffalo Bill Jr. Now with his horse and with his gun, he's not afraid of anyone. Cause no one's quicker on the draw or quicker to defend the law. Buffalo Bill Jr. Buffalo Bill Jr. He's the son of a son of a gun, Buffalo Bill.